Hello everyone, welcome back to Meninair. In this video, let's discuss about the anatomical landmarks of a tooth. So let's begin. Here we could study the anatomical landmarks of the crown surface as well as the root surface. The crown surface is not just a single mass like a ball. There are certain elevations and depressions on the crown surface which are not named as cusp, cingulum, tubercle, mammalons, lobe, ridges, fossa, pits, fissures, sulcus, developmental groove, contact area, interproximal spaces and embrasures. Now let's have a look at each one of them in detail. Now let's begin with the term cusp. A cusp is an elevation on the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth and canine. Each cusp represents developmental lobes of that tooth. It contributes to a significant portion of the tooth surface and divides the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth. Now let's have this picture as a reference and in this molar we have five cusps totally and it is present on the occlusal surface of the teeth right now let us consider a single cusp right so each cusp has four cusp slopes like this side on this side on the mesial and on the distal as well so all these cuspal slopes there are totally four right and we also have one apex right here. So each cusp is made of four cusp slopes or ridges and an apex. Let's see the various number of cusps present in each teeth. One cusp is present in canine, two cusps are present in maxillary premolars and mandibular first premolars, and two or three cusps are present in mandibular second premolars, whereas four cusps are present in maxillary molars. 4 or 5 cusps are present in mandibular molars. Cingulum. Cingulum is a bulge or elevation on the lingual surface of incisors or canines. So it is present on lingual surface of incisors or canines and it is present only in the cervical third of the teeth which makes the bulk of the cervical third. The term cingulum comes from a Latin word which means girdle. Since it encircles the lingual surface of the tooth, mesiodistally in the form of a girdle. Here we could see the lingual surface of the central incisors and this part right here is the cingulum which is present on the cervical third of the tooth. And you can see the cingulum girdling the mesiodistal width of the teeth. Tubercle Tubercle is a small rounded prominence on the surface of the tooth resulting from extra formation of enamel. Tubercles are usually deviation from the normal form. For example, cusp of caraboli is a tubercle. Cusp of caraboli is the fifth cusp that is present on the palatal surface of maxillary first molars. Similarly, we have another tubercle called talon's cusp which is present on the cingulum of permanent maxillary lateral incisors. We also have Leong's premolar or dense evaginatus which is present as an accessory cusp or a globule of enamel on the occlusal surface of premolars. In this diagram you can clearly see that here this is the talons cusp right here which is seen on the palatal surface of your lateral incisor. Ridges. Ridges are linear flat elevations on the teeth and there are various types of ridges based on their location or form. The various types of ridges are labial ridge, buccal ridge, incisal ridge, lingual ridge, linguo-incisal ridge, oblique ridge, cervical ridge, marginal ridge, cusp ridge, triangular ridge and transverse ridge. This one right here is the marginal ridge which is linear rounded border of the enamel that forms the mesial and distal border of the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth. Here is the labial ridge which is running cervical incisally approximately at the center of the labial surface of the canines. It extends from the cusp tip to the cervical region of the tooth. This ridge is very prominent in maxillary canines compared to the mandibular canines. The next ridge that we could see here is the buccal ridge 
which is a ridge running cervico occlusally approximately at the center of the buccal surface of the premolars it also extends from the cusp tip to the cervical region of the tooth it is most commonly prominent in the first premolar compared to the second premolars now here we have the lingual ridge which is running cervico incisally approximately at the center of the lingual surface of the canines which extends from the cusp tip to the cingulum in the cervical third thereby it divides the lingual fossa into two parts now the incisal ridge it is present in the incisal portion of newly erupted incisors where the incisal surface is rounded and merges with the mesio incisal and disto incisal angles and labial and lingual surface to know more about the surfaces of the tooth i recommend you guys watch the previous video of anatomy of the tooth which is already up on the channel Oblique ridge refers to a ridge that crosses the occlusal surface of the molars obliquely that is from one side to another side Transverse ridge represents a ridge that crosses the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth transversely and is created when the buccal and lingual triangular ridges join So what is a triangular ridge then it is a ridge that descends from the tip of the cusps of molars and premolars towards the central part of the occlusal surface in cross section the ridges are more or less a triangular and hence the term triangular ridges and finally the cervical ridge is the ridge that is running mesio distally on the cervical third of the buccal surface of the teeth it is found on the all primary teeth and on permanent molars mammalons Mammalons are the protrusions seen in the incisal ridges of newly erupted permanent incisor teeth. They represent three lobes from which labial surfaces form and they are separated by developmental grooves. Here we could see the mammalons on the anterior teeth's incisal edge. Developmental lobe Developmental lobe is the growth center in the development of crown of the tooth. Each tooth begins to develop from four or more developmental lobes and they clinically appear as cusps and mammalons on the tooth surface. Here is the list of the teeth and their respective developmental lobes. Fossa Fossa is an irregular rounded depression or concavity found on the lingual surface of anterior teeth and occlusal surface of posterior teeth. The point of convergence of the ridges and the junction of the grooves form the depression or fossa in the posterior teeth. There are different types of fossa which are named as lingual fossa, central fossa, distal fossa and triangular fossa. Here we can see the central fossa which is the major fossa found on the occlusal surface of the molar teeth. The next one is the distal fossa which is found distal to the oblique ridge in the occlusal surface of the maxillary molars. Next one is the triangular fossa which is a minor fossa found mesial as well as distal to the marginal ridges and it is termed as mesial or distal triangular fossa. The final type of fossa is the lingual fossa which is found on the lingual surface of anterior teeth. And that completes part 1 of the anatomical landmarks of the crown surface. In part 2 we will continue with the remaining anatomical landmarks. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.